Aloha! Welcome to Kencho Quest. In this video, I'm going to show you how I fly with my one-year-old toddler on my lap. Our family of four has been traveling full-time for the past nine months, and we're about to take our 10th flight with our one-year-old toddler and our six-year-old kid. We'll be vlogging our travel day and sharing tips along the way. I just want to put a disclaimer right here up front that if you're flying with a baby or toddler, the safest way is to buy them their own seat and have them ride in their car seat. That's the best for takeoff, landing, unexpected turbulence, and to keep your car seat from getting damaged. However, on this flight, I will be flying with her as a lap child. We will fly from Phu Quoc Island, Vietnam to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We have a two-hour layover, and then we will fly from KL to Penang, Malaysia. Aloha. Aloha! Welcome to Kencho Quest. We're a full-time traveling family currently in Vietnam. Please subscribe for packing tips and travel inspiration. And give us some thumbs up! Having smoothies is a quick breakfast before we go and we also boiled some eggs. What it, how do you say that smoothie in Vietnamese? Xin to yao. Here's the first tip right here. Before you take a flight with your toddler, clip their nails. If they get overly tired and start clawing at you, you don't want them to have long, sharp nails. We're also trying to get some protein into them, having some boiled eggs, so they'll be satiated for the flight. And my egg yolk fell on the floor. Oh no. Oh, no. I also forgot to leave out our Highlands Arnica tablets. These are the painkiller we use for our toddler in case she needs them. I'm going to move these into her snack bag to have on the airplane with us. She'll be using her car seat for the taxi ride to the airport and then we're going to be checking it in. So we have this bag to check it in with. It works as a backpack in case if you're flying alone and you need to carry the car seat through the airport, you can just wear it on your back in this. The best way to check your car seat though so that it doesn't get damaged is in its original box. I did that when I was flying with her just to California and back with her infant car seat. Now we've upgraded her to a bigger car seat since she grew out of her infant one. This is the Cosco Sonera Next and it's a really great lightweight one for travel. We do have a lot of luggage since we're traveling full time, but we'll be checking in all three of these suitcases so that we'll have minimal stuff to bring on the airplane with us. My husband and I will each bring a small personal item backpack and we'll bring this carry-on bag with items to keep us all comfortable on the flight. I have a separate video showing exactly what we pack in our carry-on bag, and my son will be carrying on his ukulele. So we try to keep it as minimal and few items on the plane with us as possible, because I've learned over the years, the more things you bring on board, that's just more things you might forget and leave behind on the airplane. Our biggest tip is to pack lots of snacks. We dig into the snack bag starting on the taxi ride to the airport. For our son, we have this Ride Safer vest. It works in place of a booster seat. It's a lot more lightweight and compact than carrying around a booster seat. He's been traveling with that since he was about three years old. This is the first time we have one cart. I hope we didn't forget anything. So we'll be checking the three suitcases, the car seat. We'll be each taking on a backpack. And this is our family carry-on bag. We're flying Air Asia, and they are very strict about luggage weight. So we weighed our suitcases before we headed to the airport. I've got my backpack on. First order of business after checking our bags is to take the toddler to the bathroom. Since we're traveling internationally, right now we're going through immigration. No filming allowed as we go through. See you on the other side. We just went through both immigration and then security. We're departing from a small on-island airport, so the lines were both pretty short. Just a couple things I wanted to mention. We do have liquids for the kids. They're water bottles, so I take these out and put them in the tray when we're going through. There was no problem here. They didn't even bother to test them. And then it's always good to have somewhere easy to put your passports. So we just slide them in this outside pocket here right before we go through security. And this was the first time ever they asked me to take her out of the baby carrier and have her walk through. I guess it's obvious that she's a toddler now. As a baby, I always just wore her through security and they'd usually just do an extra little pat down. 
Now that we're at our gate, it's snack time again. After we got through security, we got a couple of drinks for the grown-ups, since now we can have liquids. I wasn't quick enough to say no bag, so I figured we'll just use this as our garbage bag for the rest of our travel day. We got some of these little jelly candies the kids like. Another tip if you're going to be flying with kids is to apply ahead of time for a TSA pre-check or a global entry if you'll be going international. We had applied, but we ran out of time and we didn't get our interviews in time before we left the United States. So unfortunately, we weren't able to take advantage of that. But if you can get TSA pre-check or global entry, then you'll be able to have a lot quicker process to bypass the security line. As you've seen, I've just been wearing my daughter in the baby carrier. Right now, we're not even bringing a stroller traveling with us. We started our trip with our Vera Cruiser stroller wagon, and we were mostly using it as a luggage cart to pull our backpacks. But now that we switched to rolling luggage, we haven't really needed it, so it went home, and we're just traveling without a stroller. That's our parenting style. With our first baby, we didn't even have a stroller at all with him. To me, it's easy enough just to keep my kid close to me in the carrier. And especially traveling places like we've been in Vietnam right now, it's not practical to be pushing a stroller on the sidewalks anyways. The motorbikes driving and parking on the sidewalks. If you're going to be flying with a lap baby, you'll want to bring some proof of their age to show that they're under two years old. Since we're flying internationally, we have our daughter's passport with us. Another tip is to wait until last to board the plane so that your child's not cooped up a long time waiting and getting restless on the plane. For us, it's my husband's preference to wait till last minute to get on. For me, my personality is hard to sit around. I want to be up there boarding with the early family free boarding But I think we'll hang back and just wait until getting on the plane last give our kids as much time as possible to move around in the airport before we're confined to the airplane. The one concern with boarding last is there might not be any more overhead space for your luggage, but since we just have three small items, we could put them all under the seats in front of us if we need to. Usually we like to put our backpacks up above and then keep just our carry-on bag with our necessities at our feet. We'll do one more bathroom opportunity before we get on the plane as well. We like to sit a couple rows from the back of the plane so that it's easy access whenever we need to go to the restroom, but we don't like to be right next to the bathroom where people congregate. If your airline provides an infant seat belt, you can attach it to your seat belt. This loop here goes onto your seat belt. Then buckle around baby and tighten. I'll move my purse down to the floor once I get the kids situated. Fasten your seatbelt too, Kaisho. I usually nurse on takeoff and make sure to wear something that's easy to nurse in. And she's asleep already. Good thing we have three seats in a row. It's meal time and she's still asleep. She woke up so it's time for a bathroom trip. I bring a small diaper clutch with diapers, wipes, and change pad. Now that my daughter is potty trained, this is holding spare outfits for each of my kids. The changing table folds down right above the toilet. You can place your own changing pad on it. Or if your toddler is potty trained, then they can just use the toilet. Time for a little entertainment. Our six-year-old is getting some screen time playing games on his dad's phone. Our toddler is looking at the menu magazine. Okay. Yeah, we're almost there, sweetie. The first flight went well. It was only an hour and 45 minutes. So basically, she nursed on takeoff, napped, then we ate while she was still napping. She woke up near the end of our meal, 
I took her to the bathroom, and by then they were already turning on the seatbelt sign to land. She nursed again while landing. Now we're here at the airport, letting our six-year-old use the toilet real quick. And then we have quite a walk to get across the airport to catch our next flight, which is an even shorter one. Another bathroom break for us as well, and then we're ready to roll. A lot of airports outside of the U.S. have free small luggage carts that you can use for transporting your carry-on bags. So that's really nice. We don't have to be carrying our backpacks and bag right now. We just arrived in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And because of the airport we flew into, we're going to have quite a walk to go catch our next flight. Which is going to be just a 50 minute flight, right? 40 50 minutes, so a short one. We have about a two hour we have about a two hour layover which gives us plenty of time to get to the next flight and possibly time to eat something. We'll see. They even have complimentary baby strollers, but I think we just got to a spot in the airport where we have to leave our cart anyway, so I guess we won't be using the stroller right now. Once we arrived we had to go through immigration, then we had to leave the arrivals, go back to the departures, get new boarding passes for our second flight, go through security again, and now we have to walk 20 minutes back across the airport to get to our gate for our second flight. How are you doing, Harumi? Are you ready for another flight? Yeah? You ready to go another airplane? Okay. We found our gate way down at the end where there's nothing, so me and the kids are going back to find a drink at a little market we passed. This time we get to test out the complimentary stroller. After we had a little potty break, now let's go find a drink. Okay, don't run into anyone, Kaisho. Steer it, steer it. Uh-oh. Well, we stop for Halloween and airplane flights. Flight two, this is going to be an even shorter one, just 50 minutes, and then we should get into the bay. Yum. Yum. Good. We got our infant seatbelt buckle, we got our lollipops. Good to go. 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 We've got our boarding passes out to get our pre-booked meals on AirAsia. They don't give complimentary meals, but when you're booking your tickets, you can choose to pay for a meal. George was able to get a Malaysian SIM card really quickly at Hotlink in the airport. And we also took some money out of the ATM. So now we just need to go find the grab pickup point so we can get a grab ride to our Airbnb. Unfortunately, Kaisho is feeling awful, so George has to carry him the whole way, and I'm pushing the luggage. We made it to our Airbnb on Penang Island. That last bit once we arrived at the airport in Penang was really rough. Our son is feeling really bad. He has super bad pains in his stomach, like he has food poisoning or something, so he needed his dad to carry him. But his dad has a bad headache and body ache and isn't feeling well himself. And then that left me carrying the rest of the stuff, wearing our daughter heavy backpack, purse, and then also the carry-on bag. So that's one scenario. It would have been nice if we'd had a stroller. We made it to our place. We got a grab no problem. Oh, but right before that, I spilled the entire luggage cart full of luggage in the street, crossing over trying to get our grab. We had taken our car seat off the cart already and then just plopped it on top. It wasn't balanced. And so when I was trying to go up the little ramp to get to the middle where we we're going to get our grab car, I was pushing the cart with one hand, holding onto the car seat with the other. And then the car, the the luggage cart started rolling back towards my daughter in the carrier and that scared me. So then holding on with only one hand, it started veering to the side and whoosh, 
all of our luggage went out into the street. So that was really embarrassing. <laughs> it would have been better if we'd left the car seat exactly where it was until we found where we had to get our grab. But here we are. Our place looks really nice. It's about 9 p.m. local time, which I think means that to us it feels like at least 8 p.m. It feels like bedtime for the kids. We're just getting here and whenever we arrive in a new place, we have to move things out of our toddler's reach. So we started doing that, making sure she doesn't break things. We're gonna be in a three bedroom, two bath place here. Ooh, which looks pretty nice. We'll probably be doing an apartment tour. So traveling with kids may not be all rainbows and unicorns, but you'll survive and get through it. If you like packing tips and more inspiration for traveling with kids, please subscribe to our Kencho Quest YouTube channel. Thanks for watching!